uh, the practicing physicians are well aware of the fact that uh, strep typhus is uh, one of the re-emerging disease uh, in India and it is very common in our country. But in spite of that, it is uh, highly ignored, particularly during the epidemics of viral fever. So we want to emphasize the point that a high degree of suspicion is an absolute necessity to diagnose such a deadly diseases. Um, and the other reason why this problem is always uh, underdiagnosed and underreported is due to the misconception that uh, this problem is this is mainly a concern in uh, heavily forested areas. But it is not the fact. Uh, the disease causing mite is very commonly found in um, uh, even in our surroundings like uh, grassy lawns, poorly maintained kitchen gardens, river banks, rice fields, and uh, so many places. So the key for diagnosis is always uh, um, uh, a high degree of suspicion for this disease. With this, uh, let us move on to the case scenario. The first patient is a 35 years old lady who came with complaints of high grade fever with chills, rigor, myalgia, throat pain of one week duration. She was uh, initially treated by a local physician with intravenous antibiotics, but there was no significant improvement. And so she came to our hospital for further management. She had no history of cough with expectation, chest pain, breathlessness. She had no abdominal pain, dysuria, or uh, uh, frequent micturation. There, were, there was no history of any loose stools, rashes, or bleeding manifestation. So she had no localizing symptoms for her fever. The past history was uh, also insignificant. She had no history of any diabetes, hypertension, CAD, CKD, or PT. Coming to the personal history, she consumes a mixed diet. Bladder and bubble habits were unaltered. And uh, there was no history of any chronic drug intake. Family history was, is, was also uh, insignificant. On a general examination, the patient was uh, conscious, oriented. She had had no pallor ectris, no clubbing cyanosis or uh, lymphadenopathy. There was no pedal edema. Her heart rate was 110 per minute. BP was 110 per 60. Systemic examination was also well within normal limits. There was no lo any localizing signs uh, uh, in the systemic examination for her sepsis. <coughs> On day one, the patient was admitted and evaluated. Her basic blood investigations were uh, within normal limits, except for uh, uh, the low hemoglobin. All the biochemical investigations were normal. Her urine routine was also normal. X-ray chest was normal. So blood and urine cultures were sent, and the patient was started on IV antibiotics. So this was the lab report on day one. Her hemoglobin was 9.6 gram percentage. The total count was 9,900, and platelet count was 2 lakhs. This was the ECG. It showed um, a sinus tachycardia. Other than that, there was no significant abnormality. On day two of uh, hospitalization, the patient developed a dry cough with mild breathing difficulty, but she was able to maintain oxygen saturation of around 95% in room air. On examination, the respiratory system was normal. Uh, air entry was equal bilaterally, and there were no added sounds. She was proceeded with CT chest and abdomen which showed bilateral minimal pleural effusion, diffuse interstitial septal thickening in both lungs with mild hepatosplenomegaly. And the radiologist opinion was like uh, early, curry early pulmonary edema, curry viral pneumonia. So the patient was started on tablet Tamiflu. So these are all the CT pictures of the patient. Uh, it shows a minimal bilateral pleural effusion with uh, interstitial septal thickening. So the patient's uh, blood and urine culture uh, were uh, reported as sterile and uh, the smear for MP, dengue serology, leptospiral spiral serology, everything was uh, came as negative. So as a part of fever workup, we did um, um, uh, autoimmune workup also. Uh, they also turned out to be negative. ANA and ENA profile were negative. The CRP was uh, uh, continuously on the higher side, 160. On day three, the patient continued to have fever spikes and there was... Uh, a worsening of cough and dyspnea and the saturation dropped to 85 to 90 percent in room here. Uh, clinically, the respiratory system was normal. So we shifted, the, the, we started the patient on empirical antimalarial and doxycycline and she was shifted to CCU for further observation. This was the ABG taken uh, uh, in the critical care area. The pH was slightly um, uh, alkaline with uh, mild elevation of uh, bicarb. It was 28.4, so probably metabolic alkalosis. Uh, 
pulmonologist was also involved in the care of the patient he advised to do to do d dimer echocardiogram and serum procalcitonin echocardiogram was done and it showed mild dilatation of the right atrium and right ventricle with mild pulmonary artery hypertension the d dimer was uh, 1600 was high and the bnp was also on the higher side 627 serum procalcitonin was 5.6 as the patient uh, condition clinical condition was and the dyspnea and uh, was worsening so she was connected to non invasive ventilation and lasix infusion was started uh, urgent ct pulmonary angio was planned and it uh, turned out to be normal the, there was no evidence of any significant pulmonary thromboembolism in this patient as the patient had a history of fever with uh, ct chest uh, showing evidence of uh, pulmonary edema and um, the bnp being very high uh, we suspected myocarditis in this patient so cardiac enzymes were sent and it uh, came as positive tropi was 0.17 so the next day the patient um, uh, was symptomatically better and she was off niv support uh, she had low grade fever spikes uh, we continued uh, the anti malarial antibiotics and doxycycline for that patient the next day the patient general condition was um, much better fever settled and she was able to maintain 100% saturation in room here so she was shifted out of the critical care area infectious disease specialist opinion was obtained and he advised to do throat swab for h1n1 and it was negative and uh, we uh, suspected strep typhus in this patient as one of the possibilities so we sent igm antibody for strep typhus and it came as positive so as per the icmr criteria for uh, uh, the diagnosis of strep typhus this patient comes under the category of undifferentiated fever which is lasting for more than 5 days and uh, developing complication in the form of myocarditis during the second week of the fever with dramatic response to appropriate antibiotic and uh, the igm antibody for for strep typhus was also positive so in this case we could able to save the patient only because of uh, even after developing uh, dreadful complication like myocarditis only because of uh, 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 the other high degree of suspicion and starting the patient on uh, uh, the appropriate antibiotic which was started promptly even before the uh, clinical worsening of the patient uh, now let us see the second case scenario he is a 60 years old male who is a known case of uh, uh, diabetes mellitus hypertension and cad post ptca status uh, he got admitted with complaints of fever of uh, 10 days 10 fever 10 days back which lasted for 2 days uh, he got admitted with complaints of cough breathing difficulty abdominal pain and loose stools with reduced appetite of 2 3 days duration on examination she, uh, he was uh, conscious well oriented a febrile he was um, uh, he had mild dehydration he had no pallor ictus clubbing cyanosis no lymphadenopathy or no pedal edema the pulse rate was 102 per minute respiratory rate was 23 and bp was 100 per 60 the systemic examination was also normal for this patient so this was the lab report on day 1 uh, of admission uh, his hemoglobin was 10.5 slightly low total count was 6800 platelet count was 2 lakhs but uh, the patient's urea and creatinine were elevated um, urea was 102 and serum creatinine was 2.88 with mild hyponatremia other than that her chest x ray was no his uh, chest x ray was normal urine showed 2 plus protein urea and the coagulation profile was normal uh, malarial parasite leptospiral serology and viral test were all negative the patient was started on uh, iv antibiotic this patient used to come for a regular follow up with a cardiologist every month and uh, we went through the previous records the patient's uh, renal parameters were absolutely normal um, uh, he was uh, uh, 60 days prior to the present admission his renal parameters were normal so we considered it as a acute renal failure on um, day 2 of admission the patient uh, developed low grade fever dry cough and his dyspnea worsened 
Clinical examination showed bilateral basal crepitation and echocardiogram showed regional wall motion abnormality, which is the ejection fraction of 40%. So the patient was started on IV diuretics, oxygen support, and he was shifted to ICU for further management. <laughs> On day three and four, the patient's clinical condition um, uh, was actually worsening. He became more drowsy. He was arousable and answering relevantly. He remained afebrile uh, during the ICU stay. Renal parameters were gradually worsening and uh, he was able to maintain uh, saturation with two liters of oxygen. His blood and urine cultures were sterile. Ultrasound abdomen showed medical renal disease. His CT chest showed features of pulmonary edema and uh, CT abdomen uh, showed no evidence of uh, any pyelonephritis or any other focus for infection. Uh, CT brain was also normal. The next, uh, the, on the, in the consecutive days, uh, his drowsiness and dyspnea increased. He was supported with the NIV and renal parameters continued to worsen. Patient became hypotensive and was started on inotropic supports. So this was a serial blood investigation which were done uh, during his hospital stay. The hemoglobin to start with it was around 10.5 and gradually dropped to, uh, up to uh, came up to 7.6 and the total cone remained normal throughout his hospital stay. Um, a platelet cone was also normal throughout his stay and uh, there was a gradual worsening of renal parameters. To start with the urea was 102 and gradually it increased and went up to 160 and serum creatinine to start with it was 2.88 and it went up to 5.99 and um, so nephrologist was involved in the care of this uh, patient as as per his advice one sitting of hemodialysis was done for this patient on the fifth day when the parameters were very high 5.99 and as the hemoglobin was gradually dropping uh, with worsening of the renal parameters, nephrologist advised to rule out multiple myeloma as one of the cause for uh, acute renal failure. So we've uh, sent a uh, serum electrophoresis, but it was negative. On further investigating, the serum procalstonin was uh, gradually worsening, increasing. The serum LDH was normal. Peripheral smear was also normal for this patient. So the antibiotics were stepped up and injection azithromycin was added. And uh, considering uh, streptyphus is one of the cause for acute renal failure, uh, we sent IgM antibody for streptyphus for this case and it was positive. So again, as per the ICM uh, guidelines, uh, he comes under the category of undifferentiated fever with um, acute renal failure, which developed during the second week of the illness with a positive uh, antibody for streptyphus. But unfortunately, this patient, uh, due to financial constraints, he could not able to, he, were, he could not offer the treatment at Apollo ICU. So he went against medical advice. Brief uh, review of literature about the streptyphus. It is caused by uh, It's uh, maintained by transovarial transmission in the trombicloid mites. Um, and it, uh, the infected larval mites inoculate the organism into the skin. The uh, shigas are particularly found in areas of heavy scrub vegetation during the wet season. So this is the electron microscopic view of the shigar. This is the so-called Suchigomushi triangle. India is well within this triangle. And they claim 1 billion population are at risk and 1 million cases occur annually. So coming to clinical manifestation, the illness varies from either mild uh, illness um, or it can present as a, um, a fatal illness. So if I left untreated, the case, uh, the fatality rate will be around 35 to 45 percent. So usually after the incubation period of uh, one to three weeks, the patient will present with fever, headache, myalgia, cough and GA symptoms. The classic case description include SGR, which uh, where the sugar has faded with regional lymphadenopathy and a maculopapular rash. Severe cases typically manifest with encephalitis, acute interstitial pneumonia, and or uh, other multi-organ dysfunction. So this is the typical SGR. It is nothing but um, um, a punched out lesion with uh, central necrotic scar and sur surrounding hyperemia. Uh, this is the sugar fed area.
if it is present it is pathognomonic but it is seen in less than 10% of cases in uh, both of our cases uh, the sr was not found uh, even after a careful clinical examination and uh, absence of sr is one of the poor prognostic marker so the pathogenesis is the target cell for this cryptococcus is endothelial cells and macrophages it causes focal or systemic vasculitis and perivasculitis and causes multi organ uh, damage so the complications the most common uh, complication being interstitial pneumonitis acute hepatic failure acute renal failure myocarditis pericarditis meningoencephalitis or septic shock and the diagnosis is uh, mainly by the igm antibody by elisa which will be positive by the end of first week the confirmation of diagnosis is by pcr technique so the drug of choice will be oral doxycycline the alternate being azithromycin for drug resistant streptococcus azithromycin or doxycycline with rifampicin so certain uh, indicators for poor, poor prognosis or old age absence of sr hypoalbuminemia and coagulation disorders